Okay, everybody, welcome to the first Dog Brothers Martial Arts Association podcast. Uh, today, I have the founder, Guru Mark Crafty Dog Denny with us, and Guru Guard Dog Ryan Gruen with us. Uh, this is our stumbling through our inaugural episode. We just- yeah, um, I think one of the, the coolest parts about this is um, since day one with dogbrothers.com and having the forums and whatnot, uh, Guru Crafty's always been really active. Um, and everybody that's been part of the forums has, has seen that. Uh, and w- what I kind of see with these podcasts is it's the next step in evolution of uh, making sure that everybody within Dog Brothers, um, you know, stays in communication. And I think it's just one heck of an awesome opportunity to have, you know, Guru Crafty. Um, you know, we got the webcam rocking and we got him on, you know, on screen and being able to get stuff from him is just going to be enormous. Uh, yeah, I'm a low tech kind of guy, but uh, so I'll be experiencing what all this is about. For me, it's kind of the the story will tell itself. Uh, this is a new part, new thing for me. Bob just walked me through getting connected to all of this. I did my usual temper tantrum when dealing with technology, <laughs> and uh, here we are. <laughs> my children laugh at me. Okay, Guru Crafty, can you please uh, let us know uh, what your vision was initially for the Dog Brothers Martial Arts Association, uh, and how has the association helped you make that a reality? I know we're still in the process of that, uh, but... Let's hear a little bit more about your vision for this. Where are we going? Well, the association's been in place probably since about 2002. I'd have to look that up to make sure. And we serve as in a very low-key way for about uh, 12 years or so. And, um, I, you know, had a lot, you know, good loyal following of people. It, it wasn't publicized much. Uh, good conversation and and so forth uh, due to my technological limitations wasn't really able to um, manifest what I wanted to with vid lessons and so forth and then a, uh, a year ago I uh, brought Bob on board and uh, we dramatically expanded the capabilities of the association and so the new era has really been what I've had in mind all along uh, this is really where the main focus of my teaching is now um, what I do is um, too distinctive, I think, for to support a school in one neighborhood. And you know, with the wonders of technology, uh, able to reach out to a worldwide community of, of people um, with this interest, with this passion. And um, so it's possible for me now to have uh, pretty much weekly vid lessons. We, we miss a week here or there. But um, in all of the three uh, areas of the system, the real contact stick fighting, the Kali Tudo, and the die less often. And by having these vid lessons, it means I can have something that can be 5, 10, 15 minutes or whatever, and I can put it out. Whereas if I'm doing a DVD, that becomes a major project, um, considerable amounts of money, time, and effort, the standard that uh, I believe that we've set over the years for with Dog Brother DVDs, with DBMA DVDs, it's pretty high, and I don't want people thinking, oh, it's deteriorating. But that standard means that I haven't been able to put out little small things of, you know, that are also, I think, of interest. And so now with this, just putting out the, you know, the small things. Uh, you know, so, for example, you know, me working with uh, you know, professional MMA fighters, so one of whom is now in the UFC, Pedro Munoz uh, in the Kali Tudo, uh, working with Frankie McRae, the camp that we held a few years ago at his gun range just outside of Fayetteville. Um, all these these things, and it becomes possible uh, to be both much more casual in what we shoot because it's just a, a, a vid lesson, so that keeps the expenses down, and that means there's all kinds of things that we can get into that I think are of real interest to people. And so the association is, is really allowing me to do that. And, is the, and, and, of course, there's always the forum where I'm always available. And uh, we have a very strong group of people who contribute. This This is not just about girl crafty pontificating. There's a real... Uh, uh, group effort 
and you know a lot of people with varied backgrounds uh, contributing to the conversation. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way it's going. Look, um, it looks like one of the oldest topics on the the public forum, at least, dates back to June of 2003. So, um, talk about a, a wealth of knowledge, not only on the the public forum, which people can access for free, but also inside the members forum, you know, dating all the way back over a decade of, of material that has already been archived and it's easily searchable and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, so I, I'll take 2003 as the starting point and something that we do both on the public forum and the association forum is that we organize things. The threads are, uh, organized it's, it, it, people, you know, so for example, if the discussion's about Kali Tudo, they go to the Kali Tudo thread, or they'll go to the dog catcher in the context of Kali Tudo. And so this means that somebody uh, can use the search function to find a particular subject matter and see the development and the evolution of it literally over many years. And so it becomes a very powerful research tool. We do this, you know, the, I, I've not really discussed the 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 content of dog brother martial arts on the public forum that that's more uh you know martial art chit chat and announcement of the seminar you know that kind of a thing but the the essence of the system's not really on the you know you need to join the association for that uh but you know the public forum as well is organized by this uh thread content right for example on the public forum we discuss concepts of crime and punishment so you know, someone who's looking for that, they go to that particular thread and just in, in, instead of just having this um, splatter of uh, different threads, you know, that just make it uh, very tedious for someone to wade through. And so basically people don't. This way you can follow the subject and its development over time. And that's another uh, chunking information is another goal that we have uh the way mark has broken up the system into the three major areas that's also what we do when we're continuously adding content rather than putting out a product and it's done technically this is never finished it's always evolving we're always adding new material to it uh and that's the whole point is that it's an alive thing things are constantly i know that's a, a taboo buzzword based on some stuff that happened at one point but uh um th this is an alive thing it's a, a growing organization it will never be finished uh and that is the whole point it will exactly. constantly evolve yeah you know uh bob bringing up the whole idea of of that chunking information um i i gotta give you props you've done an uh, extraordinary job um actually getting all the videos to again be searchable um just the other day uh i wanted to teach the seven ranges for example and i thought oh what video was that in and i started thinking back to my my vhs ta tapes of which <laughs> one it was and whatnot and um i stopped that immediately and said i'm just going to look on the association um and it was it was easily searchable i found it within a few minutes that like i said i got to give you props for being able to um to make that so easily searchable um as guru was saying with the, with the threads within the forum yeah also i mentioned that you know one of the things that we offer in the association is we have the uh fights from the open gatherings and the way bob has it set up each fight has its own little individual thing for comments so uh for if we have a member who was fighting at the gathering he can get my individualized uh analysis of the fight and you know right there and we can have a conversation right there concerning that particular fight this is the kind of thing that um you know people are fighting at a gathering find very valuable a girl lonely dog drops by sometimes and participates in the commentary there so um you know what bob has brought to things i think is is really helping manifest uh, the vision yeah, resident nerd on board here. Uh, it j and just to clear it up, Anna Screamador. <laughs> well, go. I've been a I I also train in case anybody doesn't know that, and I've been a fan of Dog Brothers uh, for a very long time. Uh, uh, I still think that first tape series, that's one of my favorite, especially the power tape, is one of my favorite sets of videos. They were VHS when I first saw them. 1993 of, that came out of all time yeah and and i had them pretty early uh and they they're awesome 
I love them. And they're, and they're still selling, I might add. I mean, how many video instructional videos have you ever seen that are selling 22 years later? Unreal. It's Yeah, they're tight. They're really tight. And, and, I, uh, and if I may, pat myself on the back. Back then, there was no digital editing. I had an SVHS system, so anytime I wanted to insert something new, in a particular, like it might have been <laughs> at minute three, and I had 40 minutes after it, I still had to redo everything that came after what I inserted. And that was the year that my uh, knee was broken, so I had extra time, and all my frustrated physical energy went into editing, particularly that first tape. And, uh, you know, I was doing things there that people like, you can't do that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I actually going back to the mid eighties, back when I was, uh, with Paul Bunak, uh, you know, he, you know, he and I were riding along and he was discussing people don't, they think they're going to block a knife cut and, you know, then punch back or something. And they just don't understand. So I said, well, let's have them understand. Let's put up a, you know, a piece of, uh, you know, like an, you know, like a, a pig leg or something and cut it and let them see what a knife can do. He says, we can't do that. And I said, why not? <laughs> and, you know, so that's where actually it was, um, it was, a, yeah, I think it was either, I forget whether there's a pig or a sheep leg that we, you know, we, he hung up there in his garage and he took out what was, it was a spider co knife back then. That was then the cutting edge technology and knives. And he put some cuts into it and showed people just how deep that went. And so when I was doing the, um, first series in the real contact stick fighting. I had that footage of the man apes from 2001. I had the, uh, which was, uh, you know, um, a very concrete expression of all the evolutionary psychology, evolutionary biology, uh, theory, uh, within the dog brother philosophy. I had that footage of the, um, uh, the Surma warriors, uh, having their stick fight. That's Southwestern Ethiopia having a you know a, a very serious staff fight to win a woman uh who had uh wonderful breasts <laughs> and, <laughs> uh but you know just again illustrating the you know the themes and the reality um that eric and i felt was uh um you know r random in its appearance in the filipino martial arts as you know as it was then being practiced and so we just and they, also the interviews you know, just, you know, look, you know, sort of the fighters, why do you do this? And because uh, with the dog brother values of no judges, no referees, no trophies, um, it, it calls a different kind of man to do the fighting. Or now we, we have some women doing it as well. And but that then back then it was certainly an all male thing. Well, let me and, give you uh, kudos. So, you know, just the, the, the effort that I put into that edit, you know, that was pretty much a year, you know, working in this very efficient technology. You are so blessed, Bob, to have all this digital stuff. Well, let me clear something up on that topic. Uh, I actually have worked with film, with scissors, um, and <laughs> tape. Um, okay, okay, and, there you and, go. And I, uh, the edits that I did back in the 90s, I had VCRs set up, and you had to punch edits in and do all that. That... Ladies and gentlemen, is known as linear editing. The stuff wow. we're doing now is nonlinear editing. In other words, you can move things around all you want, like puzzle pieces. Back then, it really sucked, and my stuff from the early 90s did not look like what Mark did. <laughs> it really uh, was very difficult to do a quality product back then. So believe me, I understand the work that went into that, and that's part of why I uh, think it's awesome. And the other thing that brings it full circle to where we're going with this, uh, I 100% I understand what Mark said when he said that was his original vision uh, because I saw that vision in those tapes. Now... <laughs> We actually can do that. We can put up a fight, one fight, a searchable fight, find that fight, and talk about that fight, and analyze that fight, bring that knowledge back into a system in a very efficient way, and work on the material. So we're using the tools how they're supposed to be used, not just because they're cool. And and I like to nerd out as much as anybody else, probably a lot more than anybody else. But uh, the whole point is to use these tools to improve ourselves and to improve the art and make everything better for everybody and easier and more accessible. Uh, and I think now we're moving into that point where 20 years ago, those tapes, they were, they were already there and they still hold up to this day. 
Um, but what's kind of fun now is now new blood can be cultivated and be brought in and, and we can bring it up to speed and analyze it. And, and just as uh, back then when I was newer to this, I was still a Taekwondo back in, uh, I started with, uh, with all of this stuff in 92. So I found the Dog Brother stuff pretty early uh, on, on this journey. But um, as a new guy looking at this, I, I kept hearing, well, this is probably what happened. Or when you do this, this is what they're going to do. Uh, you know, this is what's going to happen. If the guy does that, we were standing there doing a lot of drills. The Dog Brothers is the first time I was like, holy, did you see how hard he just swung that stick? I, no, well, I can't yeah, block yeah, that. I may jump in here. Um, <laughs> you know, when, when the videos first came out, no one had um, ever heard of the Dog Brothers. No one had ever heard of Eric Canals. And uh, I had a then the way it worked was Panther Productions was the dominant force in martial art instructional video, and they had anywhere between four and eight pages of advertising in every magazine. There were many magazines back then. It was before the internet. You had Black Belt as the dominant one, Inside Kung Fu, Inside Karate. I, I'm, I'm forgetting some of the other ones, but you know it was like that. And so. Uh, you know, the pictures that were part of the advertisements were very traditional martial arts and crafts kinds of pictures. And then there was the picture of uh, Eric looming over me, clearly <laughs> about to smash me as my knee shot had failed. And uh, Panther had this thing, you know, buy five tapes and get one free. And so Joe put our ad right next to the uh, ordering form. And we were right there. So people, you know, they bought their five tapes and well, what for what? Free one should I get? Well, and then Joe had C brutal real con the real <laughs> stick fights. And um so he put that next to the order form and people started, you know, a few people started getting it, and then they had that whoa <laughs> kind of a moment. And uh word began to spread. And so that actually put us in a very interesting position in that we were never indebted to the magazines. Uh, whereas there was another company that said, well, you know, if you do a video for us, we'll put you on the cover, but then we get all the revenues or, you know, something like that terrible deal. And, uh, we just never had to do that. You know, you know, our, uh, audience is indigenous to us. We didn't need anybody else to get our traction. Uh, I still, uh, I still remember what it felt like people forget today because they have access to see these things now back then that did not exist hmm. uh we sparred and we did things but nobody was doing it like that at least not anywhere you could see it they were all in back rooms and, and it, it was this group of guys who were rocking it like that uh and yeah. wow that just i mean we we started trying it right away and I got creamed. Like, it really sucked. I mean, the first time I tried to do anything with my training partner, he thrusted me in the throat. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this is horrible. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, like my collie doesn't work. Oh, my God. It was awful. Uh, but it was a wake-up call. Hey, to, to, to bring that back around to the, you know, back to the association, I think that's, you know, you kind of have the, the two the two groups of people. The people that think all Dog Brothers martial arts is that. You know, and then you have the people that say, well, I just want to train all the moves, you know, and uh, unfortunately, I think some people have thought that all of it is the fighting, fighting, fighting and Bob Brigge getting stabbed in the throat. And, <laughs> you know, we, we, this is really a very, very good point that Ryan's bringing up here is uh, the system is for uh, walk as a warrior for all your days and not everybody should be real contact stick fighting. And you know, it, it's, I remember a story that Gurren Asana would tell from time to time of when he was in the army. Was it, what was it? The 101st airborne or the 82nd airborne or something at, right. uh, at Fort Campbell in Kentucky, I think it was. And, um, he spoke about how there were guys in the boxing program who just were very brave in the ring. But when it came time to uh, crawl under the barbed wire with the live bullets flying overhead that they were in condition brown. And so the, what I take from that is people are brave in different ways. And there's a certain transferability, I think, that if you know how to, if, if you have experience operating in the adrenal state, that that should help you in whatever the uh, trigger for the adrenal state is. 
But, you know, the courage it takes to do what we do is different than the courage of a uh, policeman going into a, an abandoned building knowing that there's somebody bad in there. Or, you know, the, you know, the courage that it takes to ride in a Humvee knowing that there's IEDs on the road. There's all kinds of courage. And, um, you know, what we do is just one aspect of it. So we don't look down on people who don't do real contact stick fighting. It is for everyone. And for someone who's a practitioner who wants to be able to handle himself as he walks as a warrior for all his days to defend his, his family or, you know, just himself as he goes around or, you know, an innocent person in need of help, um, you know, training a lot of, in a system that's regularly being seasoned and tested and uh, alongside people who are doing the fighting. There's a value to just being a training partner to someone who is fighting, who is getting ready for a fight. And just the, the feel of it and the certain mindset that goes with how do we extract value from the art. Um, I, you know, I, I think that that's uh, an, an important point, that we are for everyone, all ages, men, women, uh, young, old, so forth. I 100% agree with that. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be. Uh, there is that, uh, oh my God, they're just the guys who hit each other. No, it's much deeper than that. There's a mm -hmm. lot more to it. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is, um, people say, oh, the dog brothers, you know, it's the basics, you know, crude, simpler, you know, all the, you know, they're just tough guys and, you know, this and that. And as a teacher, the logic of, uh, how I like to begin and progress things is I like to say primal probabilities first. And so, you know, one of the, Bruce Lee spoke of the three most common errors in martial arts, trying to impress yourself, your opponent, and the audience with what you know. And so what is the thing that everybody does with a stick or a club? They do a caveman strike. And so you see some people coming into the Filipino martial arts, and it's, there's this on some level conscious decision to not ever use a power crazed caveman strike because that's what an untrained person does. But when people get to fighting for real, you will see powerful cavemen, caveman strikes as part of the fight. And if you can't deal with that, you can't deal with that. You can't get to the rest of it. Hmm. And so, you know, we want to make sure that people understand, you know, the basics of power and, you know, moving your feet while you're moving your weapon. And this is, you know, one of the easiest ways to tell whether somebody has a fighter's understanding or not. Is he standing there in training, just blazing his stick, but his feet aren't moving? That's a pretty good clue that he doesn't have much experience. And there becomes a real ego challenge in slowing your stick down to the speed of your feet. In a certain sense, the speed of the fight is the speed of your feet. If somebody's blazing his stick and all I have to do is step away one foot, and he can't reach me, well, then I've just negated all of that training. And so for people who have been impressing themselves with how, oh, look at how well I've learned to blaze the stick, uh, but then the fight moves and they can't bring the fight to the opponent, you have to slow the stick down to the speed of your feet, what we sometimes call the one-for-one -one relationship. It begins with one step for every block or strike. You also, as you begin to understand the reality of things, you understand that you need to have the movements, what we call the snake, to connect all the uh, the strikes and the blocks, and you know the, the movement before when the sticks aren't hitting each other, when you aren't hitting the opponent, when your uh, Grandmaster uh, Ramiro Estelillo of the Cabarroan system said to me, you know, I was asking, I was explaining my concept of the seven ranges to him. He said the first range, what we call snake range. He said, oh, the psychological range. <laughs> And I thought that was a very perceptive name. You know, his name for it is very perceptive. There's all that moving. And, and for the same reason that Bruce Lee put the strong side forward, which was to dominate the moment of contact, you dominate the moment of contact by what you're doing in the moments immediately prior to the moment of contact. And so just the, you know, that idea and that way of moving. So when I see somebody moving a stick, I can tell whether they have those understandings and, or, or not. And for someone who's a practitioner, just being around these understandings and having them part of the training process, I think, is a, a, of uh, great utility in preparing people to uh, be functional should it ever be necessary.